بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ما أبغين was pretty much non-religious, but in the sense of going to church. There was no church. And, um, but my mother, she always used to pray. You know, like, if, I don't know if you remember Cyclone Bowler. When they come, my mother, I remember, she, used to, she was praying in the room, you know, hoping that the house don't blow over, was shaking like hard out. And um, in the morning, subhanAllah, Everything, you know, was a lot of things were just blowing over, and there was fish up on the, the the banks of the, you know, out the front of our house and stuff. But our house, alhamdulillah, was okay. You know, I started realizing, you know, like, wow, I wonder if it was because mom prayed, you know, was, and but all the cousins, you know, all the rest of our family, they're all like Mormons and stuff, uncles, aunties, and cousins, and they're all Mormons, and um. Uh, yeah, every Sunday they, the, the kids, they weren't allowed to play with us and stuff and they had to go to church and it was the day of rest, you don't do anything on a Sunday. But um, us, yeah, alhamdulillah, we always had that belief in the God. So just through, through prayer, we basically lived our life just through prayer and... Um, and that's how I always lived my life, just through prayer, believing that, you know, God's always got my back, sort of thing. Doesn't, you know, if I die, I go straight to heaven. I sort of felt like, um, I sort of felt like I had been, like, sort of, I don't know, like a wake-up call, like, whoa, is this for real? Do we end up in the hellfire if we do bad things? I didn't know, you know. I've just always been taught, you know, to be good. But if you do bad, you know, try to cover it up sort of thing, you know. And, but, um, yeah, that was my first introduction to realizing that hellfire is real, you know. I was like, nah, man. Surely God won't burn us, you know, put us in the fire and for the things we do in us. So from there on, I started, you know, believing, you know, in the name of Jesus, you know, my sins will be forgiven. So I started wearing a cross, and I started, you know, started thinking, oh man, this is going to protect me, you know, this cross, you know. If I take it off, you know, I might, my, I might become a sinner, and I won't, you know, all my sins won't be forgiven. Or, you know, bad things happen, I always, you know, pray, hold my cross, and I'll pray. And then, you know, things will be okay. But, um, yeah, it was, uh, as you're growing up into the stages of um, teenagers and you get into the, you know, the alcohol and the drugs and stuff like that, all that sort of stuff starts going out the window and it isn't until, you know, you start realizing, whoa, you know, doing some bad stuff, you know, try and ask for some more, come back to asking for forgiveness. But um, yeah, it always sticks in the, the back of your head, all your, all the bad deeds you do, you know, it's, it eats away at you, it eats at your, eats at your mind, it eats at your heart, and it eats at your self as a person, you know, and you just sin, it's, it doesn't matter, you know, what you, well, at that time, it didn't matter what I believed. I felt like I still hadn't been forgiven, you know, I still felt like, nah, there's no way someone else can just, you know, take the rap for me, you know, this is like, and the gangsters get away with this sort of stuff, you know, they, they do the crime and the little young guys will do the time, you know, I was like, wow, no way, and um, yeah, we are, I started realizing we are, when we die, we'll be questioned, you know, about our, our sins, no one's going to take the take that sin away from us except our Creator, you know. So I met my, I met my girlfriend, and she's adopted, and the only thing she was given 
for my birth mother was a Bible. And I asked her, what's this? And she says, oh, it's a Bible. Okay. Have you read it? And she says, nah. And I says, do you go to church? And she's like, uh, we used to go to church quite a lot, but we don't go much anymore. And um, so I didn't think anything of it for a few years. A few years. And um, we had our son. Our son, you know, started like um, making me sort of wake up after her. Yeah, we had a son, but something happened when my son was born. It really um, started making me question, you know, there's, there must be something else out there. Yeah, so when I moved moved back to Dunedin, we got together and, and um, yeah, I remember the, the Bible she was given at birth and I thought, you know, I might start reading it, see what it says. And in the beginning of it, it's start speaking like in the beginning there was darkness you know I was like whoa what's this you know and um I thought you know the world had always existed I don't know there was just darkness in the beginning and then he says let there be light and the, the heavens and the earth were like um united and stuff like this and he said let there be light I was thinking well Modi and, and Modi myth mythology we have um, Papa Tuanuku and um, Rangi Nui, you know, they were one. And then, the, um, what was this, Tangaro, um, Tane Mahuta, he like separated them, you know. I was thinking, well, this is, you know, these these mythologies have, you know, but it's a similarity in there. And I, so I kept reading Genesis and um, up to, um, Exodus, I started reading about, you know, how close the prophets were with God. Like they were just, like God was always just there, you know, just like how we are when we talk to each other. He's there. I was thinking, is he really that close? You know, I don't know, but maybe, you know, and I always hear about my um, Kamatuas doing prayers and stuff like this. They've done prayers before and, you know, doctors are being astound, you know, about oh, this person shouldn't be alive, you know, this shouldn't have happened, you know, and this is all from prayers. And um, so I think there's a, there's a lot of misunderstanding when the European come with their religion and and um, they told Maldives, you know, you guys worship many gods and um, stuff like that. I was thinking, no, nah, there's only one God, you know, but we know there's angels, we know there's guardians over everything. And um, I started seeing the similarities when I started reading the Bible. I was like, well, there are angels, you know, there's angels over everything. And um, the, the, the prophets, they're only worshipping God, so why not try just worshipping God? So I started worshipping, you know, not so much worshipping, but asking God, asking God to guide me, asking God for the truth. Asking God to give me understanding of the Bible because I could see some, you know, misconceptions, um, some, what do they call it, um, contradictions. I could see contradictions. I started seeing contradictions, you know. I was like, when I started getting to the Gospels, I started realizing, hang on, man, this is this is starting to change quite a bit now. Why why is it changing so much? Here. They're worshipping only God, you know, all the prophets, they're asking God, they're asking of this. And now we're getting into um, the gospel, it's starting to change. You know, even Jesus, he's speaking of God, worship God, not me, do what my father wills, not me. And I'm like, so why are all my Christian friends, they saying in the name of Jesus, and my cousins, everyone saying in the name of Jesus, when Jesus himself was saying in the name of God. I was like, well, what's going on here? So I talked to my Christian mates and they're like, oh no, you know, I've got no, I don't know, just go to church, you know. And I was thinking, why go to church if you're going to keep being bad, you know. We're getting to the stage now, you start realizing you can't be bad all your life. You've got kids, you know. you got to look after them. you got to, you know, got to be there for them. And um, so I didn't understand why. People were saying, in the name of Jesus. And then, there's different types of Christians. I was like, some say, in the name of God, 
And then at the end of the prayer, they say, in the name of Jesus. And then some say, just Jesus, 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 Jesus. And I'm like, oh, but Jesus is saying God, man. Just, just follow God. Let's just follow God. Nah, and I was thinking, man, start praying like the prophets did. You know, start asking God for the truth. Ask God for guidance. Ask God, you know, mm -hmm. to reveal what's in the, the Bible as how, how it should be you know, told, so I'll start reading the Bible, it'll say something and I'll sit there and I'll, I'll ponder on it and I'll come up with something different, you know, and it's almost like um, God is putting a thought in your head, you know, he's showing you this is where it's gone wrong, this is like, for instance, Jesus saying, the only way to God is through me, and I was thinking, okay, yeah, the Christians were telling me this, so if I don't, you know, believe in Jesus, I'm, 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 I'm going to end up in the hellfire. And um, I started realizing, pondering, the only way to, to God is through me. I started realizing straight away, not long after pondering, I thought, that's it. His actions, through Him, through following Him, through following His actions. And uh, it made sense straight away. I was like, it's not worshipping Him, it's following Him, it's doing everything He does. So in the sense where He says in the Bible, the only way to God is through me. He's right, through His actions. Of course, He's a prophet. He's a prophet just like Muhammad, you know, and Moses and all the prophets of the Bible, you know. And um, so that one was, you know, final for me. I understood straight away. The only way is through the prophets. And that is through their actions, through their, not through worshipping them, but through doing what they were doing. Be kind to your neighbours, give to the poor, love your mother, love your father, all these things, you know. And um, thankfulness to God is the main thing, you know. Always remembering God. And when you ask for something from God and He gives it to you, you know, thank Him. You know, and in Islam, subhanAllah, this is how, you know, we give our thanks through prayer. But up until, up until then, I, I was just living off prayer, living my life off of prayer. Mm. Everything, I didn't go to church, um, I just living my daily life through prayer. You know, somebody gets sick and um, end up in hospital saying they're going to die. I tell my friend, I'll do a prayer, and uh, it's from the heart, you know. I'll have a shower, and then I'll straight up in the room, I'll start praying to God, please save their life, you know. they got children, give them another chance. Maybe you bring them back to you, you know. Maybe they'll give thanks to you one day. Only only God knows, you know. Allahu Alam. And um, so I ask the next day, they, they say he's come out of his coma, this friend has come out of his coma and stuff like this. I'm starting to witness, you know, the power of God. I'm like, well, and these guys, you know, they don't even realize, you know, they don't realize I just made a, a big prayer to them from the heart. You know, I was crying for them, you know. These, I'm starting to realize if, if we keep being sinners and we die as sinners, there's... You're responsible for your sins and your 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 pay, because you ha Allah says He doesn't take a life without having given them a chance to believe in Him. And if you've been given that chance and you push it away, man, that was your that may be your last chance. You never know. So I just say to those who ever hear anything about the truth, they should embrace it. You know, and um. So I kept searching for the truth, praying to God, asking for God for the truth, you know, your prayers. I'm worshipping you, I'm asking of you, and um, you're, you know, you're, you're responding. You're showing me, you know, you're, you're accepting my prayers and, and healing people and, you know, making things run smoothly. I was like, wow, you know, this is amazing. Well, um was in, was actually uh, my daughter, my oldest daughter, she's 12 now, when she turned 5, we had a, a birthday party for her, 
and uh, the rain that just started, you know, it was raining all day, and it was, I was like, man, this is you know, not good because we don't have much room inside the house. And then I, I, and I know the power of prayer, and I was thinking, you know, oh man, I'm going to do a prayer. And I started praying, you know, asking God, you know, please God, family coming from up north, look after them, you know, give them a safe journey here and home again and friends from around Auckland and cousins and stuff and I just says I started praying to him I said I asking him you know let this night run smoothly and everyone have a good time enjoy the food and no fighting and um, hold the rain off you know even though I was thinking I wasn't thinking but I, I, I knew God is almighty he can do everything so I asked him hold the rain off, you know, because we, some of us are going to be outside because there's not enough room inside. And um, he held the rain off, subhanAllah. And I, so I started realizing, I have to find someone or I must be the one to start something that's going to worship him. I must be have to start up the truth, you know, I have to start the, I have to start the, the church of truth. And I was thinking, I was telling my mates at work, you know, I might start up a church and they'll crack, you know, and the I said, no, nah, straight up, we can play Bob Marley songs, give thanks and praises to the Most High, you know, I was like, man, they're cracking up, and I was, I was serious, though. I was laughing with them, but in my heart, I was, no, nah, I'm going to do this, I'm going to start a church, God deserves it, man, I'm going to give my thanks and praises to God. As uh, time went on, not, not much time, but maybe uh, two weeks later, I come home from a nightclub, stuck for love. God forgive me, you know. These these days, I feel sorry for my wife when I think about it. You know, they go out clubbing, spend all this money, you know, for what? For nothing, just to to feel sick the next day and empty pockets, or you know. But I come home and um, hungry, eating, watching TV, flicking through the channels. And um, the week before was still fresh in my mind about this this dua, you know, this prayer I'd make to God, you know. And um, I flipped to one channel I thought I was watching a Discovery Channel, and it was showing mountains and 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 clouds and the rain coming over the over the like a desert area, and then the green coming out. It was all like in fast motion, and um, the green grass, and then it stopped. And this, I was like, hey, what's going on here? And this eye comes up out of the, on, on the screen, this writing all comes up on the screen. And I was like, what the heck is this? You know, and then it started saying, do you not see it's we who control the weather, the, the, the clouds, and guide them to where we will, making the rain, bringing forth life. And then I was like, whoa. This is true, you know, because I, I started witnessing this firsthand. I was like, he guides the rain to where he wills, bringing forth life. And I was like, well, what is this? And then uh, I kept watching, and then, subhanAllah, was, you know, everything I've been looking for. And I was like, well, what's, I've never, why have I never heard of this? I've been looking for the truth for so long, you know. And uh, it's like God is speaking to me right now just through the TV. I was thinking, wow, what's this? You know, I kept watching. And then they're showing these people like bowing down on the ground. And I was like, now that's how God should be worshipped, you know. And they're praying. And I was like, wow, you know, this is how God should be worshipped. And um, even even says, you know, Jesus was worshipping God in the same way, you know, the same, like prostrating to God. And um, I was like, wow, these people look so clean and so, you know, godly. And then some of them, they even look like Jesus, you know, the, the descriptions of Jesus in, in the movies and stuff. I was like, whoa. So I started watching this program, Voice of Islam. And um, every weekend I was blown away. The truth that kept coming out of it, I was going, that's how I felt. That's exactly how I felt. Ah, that is, the, oh man, I've got to get me one of these books. And then at the end of the movie, at the end of that show, it always says, for a free copy of the Quran. 
write to this address and I was like, so I started writing and I was like, man, I've got to give me one of these and I'll send it off, give a donation. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, yeah, it should be about a week. And then uh, Monday, I think it was a Monday morning, I went to work and I went to go leave and there was a package at the door. I was like, huh? I didn't hear no knock at the door or nothing, but I knew straight away, this is it. My heart just like, started getting excited, jumping with joy. I was like, ah, this is it. And I put it up, I ripped it open. I was like, whoa, it's the Quran, this thing I've been watching on TV that's speaking the truth, you know. I was like, whoa, man. And I, I yelled out to my wife and she's like, ah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, no, babe, remember that show I've been watching? He said, oh, cool, you know, that's cool. And I was like, wow, I've got this Quran. Oh, I'm going to take it to work and start reading it and stuff like this. SubhanAllah, I started reading it everywhere I could. You know, like where I've got the time, I'll read it. I stuck for the lie. I, I, I didn't realize you had to have so much respect for the Quran. You know, you had, you, I didn't know you had to make wudu. You know, you had to seek refuge in, in Allah and God from Satan the expelled you know because he could come into your mind and and make you think different things and subhanallah I, I, I read the Quran for about two years but it wasn't like constant it was like just when I when I felt in my heart it was time to start reading every time I pick up the Quran and start reading it had something to do with what was happening with my life at the time and I was like, oh, oh, stuck for Allah, stuck for Allah, Allah forgive me, you know, I'll be like, cause I'm not Muslim yet, but I'm, I, I'm on the path and I'm, I still hadn't met a Muslim, I need to see them on TV and then um, I started, I started realizing if I want to be a Muslim, two years later after reading the Quran, I was like, if I want to be a Muslim, I might as well go and see what it is they do, you know, because I was, I was still going to parties with um, my, my good mate and, you know, they'll, they'll make fun of me, like, you're the only Muslim here, you know, stuff like this, and I go, sweet ass, but I only worship God, you know, and, you know, he is our creator, and to him we're going to return, so, and they're like, just get cheeky a bit and say, oh, suicide bomber, you know, but, you know, I just brush it off and I started thinking, what is a Muslim? You know, I caught a cab, I see a guy with a name like Ahmed and I ask him, is that Muhammad? And he goes, yes. And I go, oh, you're Muslim? And he goes, yes. And I go, salam alaikum. And he's like, looked at me like this, because I've been drinking, I was catching the cab and he's like, wa alaikum salam. And I was like, Oh man, me, like I'm getting excited because I'm asking questions about Islam and stuff, you know, I go, whoa, first time I met a Muslim, you know, he's a cab driver. I don't remember who he was, but I remember his name was Ahmed and I was asking him if it was Muhammad and then, so anyway, we get to where we're going and I go, ah, too much brother, you know, salam alaikum and he's like, wa alaikum salam, oh, like he hesitated to say it, you know, and I went to go pay him and he says, no. Don't worry about it. This, and I was like, you sure? And he's like, yes, don't worry. And I, so I left. And then from then on, I was like, wow, wow these Muslim brothers, are, you know, these Muslims are kind, you know. Uh, I was watching the Yusuf Estes on um, Voice of Islam, and I heard he's coming to New Zealand. So I rang my uncle up. I said, hey, uncle, want to come watch this? Um, this funny guy, he's a Muslim. And he goes, yeah, because he's keen. He's Mormon, but he's keen, you know. And um, we went to go watch him and didn't know any Muslims there or nothing, you know, none of the brothers. We just went in, we started imitating people, like how to make wudu. I just wanted to be there to watch Yusuf Estes and um, it was in the mosque in Uruhu. And uh, subhanAllah, we, we go in there, we pray and um, I, I, we, didn't know, we didn't have a clue what to do, we just you know, copying everyone else and my uncle and we're going up and down, up and down and I stop, I stop and my uncle, he's still going, I'm like, I'm starting to, I'm, hey uncle, you're making me laugh, you know, stop it and people are starting to look at us like, you come around here to muck around, you know, I was like, uncle, and I'm trying not to crack up because, you know, we're just two strangers in the, in the, 
in their own country, you know, I was like, wow, wow, what, whoa, this is amazing, you know, and um, listen to Yusuf Estes, shook his hand after the show, and man, he's amazing, you know, he makes you laugh, but it's the truth, when he talks, he makes you laugh, as well as getting the truth across, I was like, whoa, man, this guy is amazing, my, even my uncle, he was like amazed with this talk that he was giving, but after that, I thought, man, I gotta, I gotta go to the mosque. I want to be a Muslim, so I went to the nearest mosque, and um, I started seeing like a lot of my neighbors. You know, I thought it was culture. I thought they were culture, but this, they were Muslims. The whole time that I was looking for the truth, it was right next door. I was amazed, man. I was like, wow! I hear me looking on the internet, looking, you know, everywhere, searching and prayers and. The whole time it was next door, my neighbours, and they were Muslims, and I, I see them in the in the mosque. And it wasn't until later on I started recognising them in the mosque, but the first time I went there, I went, I looked in, people staring at me like, uh, who's this guy, you know, nobody knows me, they, you know, I could be a Muslim for all they know. And I was thinking, oh, someone should come up to me and ask me, you know, can I help you or anything? And I was looking around, uh, I got shy, so I left come straight home, I ask God, please, Allah, please, send me one good brother, send me one good brother to help me become Muslim, and um, I just carried on, I didn't go to the mosque, I just left it in God's hands, I come home from work, maybe a few days later, I can't remember how exactly long it was, and my wife, she says, you know where we go get our warrants from, and I go, yeah, she goes, I went there today, and um, I saw, because I, I started noticing all the writing on his walls, like in the Quran, and um, a picture of Muhammad Ali, and you know, I was like, is he a Muslim? And she goes, well, I asked him if he was Muslim, and he started, he said, yeah, like thinking, have you, is there something wrong with it? And he's like, my wife was like, no, my husband's been reading the Quran, and he's like, oh, mashallah, bring him, I want to meet him, he wants to be a Muslim, oh, I want, tell him, come, come, come meet me, and come to my shop, so I turned up to his shop, and um, one of the workers there, I was like, is there Ali here, you know, and he's like, uh, yeah, he's in the office, and then he comes up, and he goes, yes, brother, like a, Oh, I'm, um, I'm Debbie's partner, and he goes, oh, mashallah, like, he started, you know, getting all, getting all excited, like, this guy's looking for Islam, you know, I can show him the truth, and he's looking for the truth, and I can show him where to go, and we just clicked right from there, and he gave me the name Omar, and, um, so all the brothers, they call me Omar, and, subhanAllah, and, he took me to the mosque that night, he said, go home, take a shower, I'll come pick you up. And I said, yeah, yeah, okay, sweet days. And he come pick me up, we went to the mosque for Maghrib prayer. And I was sitting there in the mosque, meeting brothers, and um, I was sitting there looking out the windows, seeing the cross on top of a Roman Catholic church, I could I'll see, I was, it just, you know, it just appeared to me like, this is a weapon of mass destruction. Millions of Christians were were murdered on the on the, on the, you know crucified, and I was thinking to myself, if they had to kill Jesus with an AK-47, would they were walking around with AK-47s? What I had been back when I was younger, holding on to the AK-47, you know, asking Jesus to save me. I don't think so. And I, I said to the brother. You see the cross on the, the church? He goes, yes, brother, yes, yes, uh, Christian, okay. Do you think they would have put an um, AK-47 on top of their, you know, the dome if they had uh, killed him with an AK? He just laughed, you know, and he, he goes, yes, you're right, you're right. I go, or with a knife, if they had killed him with a knife, would they be wearing a knife around their neck? And it's, everything just started making sense to me, you know. These are forms of um, idolizing. Like idols, you know, you're putting your faith in, in the cross, you're putting your faith in, you know, images, you know, people got images of Jesus on the cross, are stuck for the Lord, you know, this is, this is, you know, a sad sight, and, uh, you know, it's, so, yeah, alhamdulillah, 
I did my shahada that night, and um, we went back to one of the brothers' houses, and a few of the brothers they turned up, and um, yeah, I did my shahada with them there, and la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. I looked at him like, what? What do you want me to say? You know, I was thinking, he goes, la ilaha and I was like, la ilaha and he goes, illallah. Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad Rasulullah. I bear witness there is no Lord except God, Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. SubhanAllah. I, I was about fulfilled from that moment. I was like, yes, it's complete now. You know, I've, I know where I'm going now. This is it. I found it. And I come home, start reading books, go to the mosque after work. Stay there for hours instead of going to the nightclub, staying there for hours. I was at the mosque, coming home. My wife, she's like, where you been? I go, I at the mosque. You know, I've got to learn, I've got to learn so I can teach these guys. And she's like, man, you go from the clubs to the mosque, what are you doing? And I was like, wow, oh, I have to, you know, otherwise, you know, how am I going to learn? And she's like, because she wasn't interested in it at the time. And then, um, so I kept learning and learning and learning for a few months. And then um, I started realizing, you know, nothing, nothing matters in life anymore, you know, yeah. except your family and and your deeds, you know, and and where are you? What are your deeds? Your intention is all for God. It has to be for God. Right. Well, my wife, firstly, I, I, you know, she started. She must have started seeing something, you know, seeing the goodness, how I change, and you know, stuff like this. And same as my mother and father, you know, they start seeing me, I'm not drinking, but they were sort of sad that I'm not drinking, you know, because in a way, that was their only form of socializing apart from fishing and, you know, stuff like that. And um, birthdays, parties, usually our only way of socializing these days. And maybe once a year we have like waka'ama or, you know, some sort of gathering and socializing. But apart from that, it's always just alcohol. You know, and the, when they when they see me not drinking, oh, you're not drinking, you know. Nah, I didn't tell them I was I was a Muslim. I said, nah, nah, I don't, I don't feel like drinking, you know. And um, it wasn't until I did say I was a Muslim, wow, the, the first reaction was, you know, anger. They were anger like. Why do you want to go follow something like that? These people are terrorists, you know. They were angry. But I talked I talk to them, you know, just to try and tell them, this is peace, you know. This is peace. Not with, not with, um, you know, like war in the Middle East and stuff. Peace with yourself and with God, you know. You found peace, you know. You know, it's like satisfaction. You're happy now, you know. You found the truth. And... Now I give back, you know. Since he's been giving, it's time to give back. And um, so they sort of think I was at first like a bit crazy and stuff. Cousins started calling me, you know, like, "Hey, where's all the bombs and stuff like this?" And I was like, "Man, you guys watch too much TV, you know. What is going on about?" And um, you know, is it a, is it a? I had one Facebook message the other day. One of the cousins, you know, he gets. Hey, cuz, is there a um, tablecloth on your head? And I was like, yeah, cuz, come for dinner, you know. Inshallah, I'll give him dao if he comes, you know. <laughs> and, um, yeah, the friends sort of started getting uneasy. You know, like, oh, true, you know, like, oh, you don't want to come get us on, the, you know, come get on the person. I was like, nah. And, yeah. So the phone calls started dying down and, you know, things started changing, and um, I started just realizing, you know, I've got to, i got to put myself in an environment, you know, that surrounds me with Muslims, so I can be stronger. You know, I've got to try and build myself up to be, you know, give myself more understanding about Islam. So I sort of started just going to the mosque more and hanging out with the brothers more in Islam, learning more, and then 
just praying for my wife, hoping she becomes a Muslim, you know, one day. And subhanAllah, I come home from work one day, my wife, she's crying, her, you know, yeah, she, tears all in her eyes, and she grabs me and gives me a big hug, and she's like, I'm so sorry. And I go, it's okay. And I was like, what's wrong? And she goes, it's okay. And then she's like, I'm so sorry for teasing you and laughing at you and while you're praying and stuff and Ramadan teasing you with food and stuff like that. And I was, like, I was just like so thankful to God, you know, he had opened her heart. Or she had opened her heart, you know, and God had shown her the truth. It's, all I can say is Islam is only good for you. Is everything in it is good for you. There's no bad, nothing. I try to find faults when I first come in. I can't find faults. You're, you're lying if you find a fault in Islam. You're lying. It's not to say that there's bad Muslims. You know, that's not to say there's bad Christians or bad anything. You know. But you're lying if you say you can find faults in Islam that it should have been like this. God knows best. This is from God. Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from Him. And He says He has perfected it. And I found, you know, I thought when I first come in, why five times, you know? Why not just in the morning and the evening when you go to bed? And then I realized, I tried that myself for stuff with Allah, you know. I tried it myself. And um, I started slipping you know, without the prayers in between, you start slipping, you start sinning. And this is why Islam has the five times, you know, five times to worship, keep us in check. And it's, it's good for any culture, really. Yeah, it's really good for any culture. Keep them strong, build them up, you know. And at the same time, keep them humble and not be so proud of themselves. Which is, you know, I find a lot of cultures, they... Without, well, you know, without the belief in God and being humble, you become proud. You know, or, you know, become real proud of yourself. You know, proud, and you start thinking you're better than everyone else. You know, but you forget the uh, you're only human, the same as everyone else. You're all the same. Just the only thing that's different is culture. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين